the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest award that can be earned by a military serviceman in time of conflict. The panels you see behind me are the Medal of Honor recipients of just the Pacific Theater of Operations during World War II. There were 473 Medal of Honor recipients that served in America during World War II. And I think when we think of the Medal of Honor, we think that somebody won that medal. And it was explained to me by Medal of Honor recipient Herschel Woody Williams that nobody wins the Medal of Honor, it is earned. And that it is not worn to remind people of what that individual did, but to remind people of those individuals who fought next to them who did not get to come home. You will see as you read the names on the plates behind me that some were awarded posthumously. They never got to live to know that they earned our nation's highest award. One in particular, Pappy Boyington, a Marine pilot during World War II, earned a Medal of Honor posthumously because it was thought that he was killed in action. And then he got to come home. So he's the only Medal of Honor recipient to live to talk about it being awarded to him posthumously. Another recipient you'll see on the wall, Sergeant John Bassalone. He was the first enlisted Marine to earn the Medal of Honor during the Battle of Guadalcanal. He stayed on and fought with his boys at the Battle of Iwo Jima, where he earned the Navy Cross. But he was killed in action during the Battle of Iwo Jima, and he would be the last Medal of Honor recipient to be sent back into battle. That would never happen again. We would preserve our Medal of Honor recipients. And lastly, Medal of Honor recipient Sergeant William J. Bordelin was the first Texan to earn the Medal of Honor. He was one of 33 Texans who earned this prestigious award. He was not yet 23 years old when he earned this award. Staff Sergeant William J. Bordelin's citation reads as this, for valorous and gallant conduct above and beyond the call of duty as a member of an assault engineer platoon of the 1st Battalion, 18th Marines, tactically attached to the 2nd Marine Division in action against the Japanese-held atoll of Tarawa in the Gilbert Islands on 20 November, 1943. Landing in the assault waves under withering enemy fire, which killed all but four of the men in his tractor, Staff Sergeant Bordelin hurriedly made demolition charges and personally put two pillboxes out of action. Hit by enemy machine gun fire, just as a charge exploded in his hand while assaulting a third position, he courageously remained in action, and although out of demolition, provided himself with a rifle and furnished fire coverage for a group of men scaling the seawall. Disregarding his own serious condition, he unhesitatingly went to the aid of one of his demolition men, wounded and calling for help in the water, rescuing this man and another who had been hit by enemy fire while attempting to make the rescue. Still refusing first aid for himself, he again made up demolition charges and single-handedly assaulted a fourth Japanese machine gun position, but was instantly killed when caught in a final burst of fire from the enemy. Staff Sergeant Bordelin's great personal valor during a critical phase of securing the limited beachhead was a contributing factor in the ultimate occupation of the island and his heroic determination throughout three days of violent battle reflects the highest credit upon the U.S. Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country.